So would be great to have a 30 second introduction from each one. Uh, so I'll just call out the names and please introduce yourself. Uh, Jesu, please go first. Yeah, hi. Uh, I work with an agency called Free Flow Ideas. Uh, we're a, quite an old agency, but we set up digital uh, just a few years back and uh, slowly finding our way around the space, trying hard to get some new clients and do some work and stuff like that. Uh, Sandeep uh, and uh, we have done a couple of projects together. Excellent. That's that's where we are. Yeah, I have a background in marketing and communication. Yeah. Excellent. Vin, you're next. Uh, so I am a founder of a company called Brand Hero. It's a fairly new setup and it's a small boutique agency. I help startups mainly and also mid-sized agencies, other mid-sized companies to, with their branding and marketing, digital marketing requirements. On a heavier side with design, of course, uh, not, not primarily focusing on marketing, but yeah, uh, I feel they're related in a way and helps to complement each other. So that's what it's, it's been like that. And I have a background in, I mean, I'm an engineer and an MBA and I'm an acquired designer by, by learning on the job. So, yeah. Nice. Harshit. Hi guys. Um, so I work with uh, Adobe in a team called the Design Lab team. Um, and the idea there is to mostly think of um, in, in, a, in sort of an unconstrained way the future of creative expression with emerging tech. So a lot of my work revolves around uh, how machine learning AI could uh, could change how people express themselves creatively uh, through tools or sort of features within tools like Photoshop and so on. Uh, apart from this corporate work, I also uh, have an art practice. So I uh, make art with machine learning and uh, exhibit them at uh, galleries and uh, sort of interactive uh, art festivals and so on. Oh, nice. Sandeep, you're next. Uh, so I know a few of you here on this panel. Um, worked with Jesu, worked with uh, Karan and, uh, and Anoop. Um, I run Pixelmatic uh, and we are an agency with a strong focus in uh, WordPress. And yeah, we've been <clears throat> building uh, lots of different kinds of uh, sites on WordPress um, from a blog to a, you know, an e-commerce store to large news, uh, subscription based news sites. And um, my role in Pixelmatic is, is more on the marketing and uh, design side. So, so I take care of uh, both the client side and, you know, our own sort of growth and, um, and we started off as a uh, product company actually back in 2011, uh, building a, an education product. And those few years were spent on exploring game design, psychology, uh, things of that sort, because we had incorporated gamification into our platform. So that, uh, and combined with my interest in photography, gives me a, a good perspective on design. So that certainly helps with the work that we do. Karan. My name is Karan Malhotra. Uh, firstly, like I said, good to be having this kind of conversation. Uh, I think, uh, and uh, Anup initiated this yesterday after the webinar that we did. So, super to be doing this. Uh, I run um, Exit Design, which is a branding and strategy firm, which we started in 2004. Uh, so that's about 16 years now. Um, my interest in the space uh, is in this design automation space and where sort of machine learning sort of plays a role. That's where Harshit has actually been helping with over time with uh, the product that we've been building uh, called Outlined. Um, that's the other thing that I do. And the third thing that I have an interest in is uh, like design for social good. So we have this initiative called Designathon which is a hackathon format where NGOs or social, social impact organizations can get a high quality marketing work where uh, Pixelmatic uh, Sandeep and his team have helped over time. So those are, yeah, those are three areas. That's a little bit about me. Okay, it's my turn. I'm Anup Kurup. Um, I come from a very different background than all of you, you know, engineer, chemical engineer, worked in the industry as an engineer, as a researcher. 
I was part of GE, GE Global Research, uh, blew up a few lab, cracked a few problems, have a few patents in my name, so all that good stuff. And then jumped into entrepreneurship, started with intellectual property rights. Uh, the first company was that. And that's where I met uh, Sandeep, in fact. Uh, then that company was sold off in 2015 and uh, marketing kind of started with my own company and said, I said, okay, this looks interesting. Let's uh, dwell deeper into it. So I bring the research side of things into marketing. I'm not a creative guy. I'm definitely not a coder. Uh, but what I do bring into marketing is the process and system side of things and a deep analytics. So when I take on a client, it's usually, I have a 12 step process I call the client engine, which I implement with any client, starting from understanding who the customer is, all the way to you know how the sales team interacts with the client. So everything in between and the automation, and uh, required communication and pitches and everything that has to come. And that's where a lot of experts come into play, you know, like yourselves, uh, who plug in their expertise in, in various aspects of the process and help the client actually build um, a systematic way of doing marketing and sales rather than making it ad hoc. Sure. So that is what I do. And since uh, March end, I've been start running this initiative called Founders Roundtable. The idea being bring together founders of companies, especially services companies, service oriented businesses and help each other out because we know our clients are suffering and we are also going to suffer because of that and see how we can upgrade ourselves, upskill ourselves, upscale ourselves. Founders Roundtable actually has taken off in a big way, I would say. We have over 300 people who subscribe to the, to the newsletter and things like that. And, uh, and we conduct these webinars every other day, I think now, you know, have conducted over 40 of them so far and, and from various disciplines. And nice. yesterday, Karan came up with this automation uh, related webinar for design, right? And that's where uh, an entire discussion started after the webinar was over. It was a one hour webinar and I think we've spent another 45 minutes discussing about automation and the future of design. And I said, okay, let's, let's get some people together who are interested in this and actually have a discussion about this, right? It's important. So here we are all, right? Yeah. There's no set agenda per se, but just to, just to structure this meeting a little bit, uh, maybe I'll request Karan to quickly take us through some of the tools, you know, maybe share your screen and take us through some of the tools you mentioned yesterday, that is number one. So based on that, we can have a discussion about how design designers, design firms will evolve. And maybe a couple of examples can be taken on design firms, which are doing some different things, you know, in the, in the graphic design, digital design space itself. Then uh, number three, once we have that short discussion would be to look at the niches that designers can go into next. Okay? So that is the broad agenda. Let us start with Karan. Please uh, share your screen, take us through some of the tools that uh, I can, I can, you know, just, Announce them one by one and you can open it up if you have, if you don't have them handy. Is that fine? Uh, no, I, actually, the thing is I had them open as tabs. I do have another presentation. I have the screenshots. You just have to give me a quick yeah, minute. Sure. Take your time. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. So you can see my screen? Yeah. 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 Sorry. Uh, so I, I will, at some point, I'll switch between this and another presentation. But yes, uh, this is what we sort of went through and I'm just going to quickly run through this. Because we are, we yeah, you can maybe directly enter the tools section, you know, so. Yeah, so we already talked about me. There's a little bit of background about automatons, uh, Mechanical Turk, are we living in the matrix? Uh, Elon Musk running out of crazy things to say, who knows? Is, is this going to be a reality? You don't know. Uh, then we spoke a little bit about the, you know, everyone thinks a creative task can be only by this very creative person, but you see it in hotels. Same thing with ATMs also. It, and therefore, automation actually led to this whole new space of uh, relationship managers, you know. And then we talked about some design basics. Uh, then context of how, you know, design tools themselves, early everything had to be done by hand. So uh, Photoshop was a boon. And this is the, these are the challenges that everyone sort of faces today. Uh, and then I will skip to the different presentation. So I actually done a session called how to become a graphic designer in 60 minutes, which is just <clears throat> using, uh, you know, design automation tools. So, you, I mean, you have a whole bunch of tools out there, right? So tools like PictoChart, uh, Snapper, 
Canva, these have democratized this idea of, you know, doing graphic design or graphic communication uh, completely, but pretty much by anyone, right? I think we have outlined also, which is targeted more at agencies and marketers where you have, say, Excel automation and you can import Photoshop, Illustrator, all these files directly into this tool, which you can't do with any of the other tools. Uh, then if you're, if you're uh, sort of challenged by way of colors, you can go into Panda colors, you know, and you can select your color palette. You can also even test them through a bunch of these mockups. Uh, if you have, your brand has to use a specific set of colors, you can go into this and it links with Unsplash. So you get high resolution, free stock image in your brand colors. Uh, if you want to figure out what colors to use, your e-commerce site and, you know, what color palette should you use everywhere else, you upload an image and give you the color palette. Uh, if you're not sure whether the image is relevant or not, and you want to get what you would otherwise get feedback from a photographer or another person, an AI engine will give you that, you know, with this tool. Uh, then, of course, you have free high resolution stock photos, so you don't have to go to photo uh, photographers necessarily. Uh, then you have things like image, you know, resizing images. You don't have to you use or Photoshop Illustrator to, you know, even just optimize an image, but you have things like image resize. I love pdf.com, I love img.com, which are great tools to use. And if you want to remove a background, you have this kind of tool. Um, if you want to get really high quality illustrations, so MIT came out with this entire platform. But again, over here, you can choose your brand colors and you get the illustration specific to your brand. Uh, you, you want to look for icons, you have the nine, noun project. If you're not sure about what fonts to use on your app, your website, wherever else, you can, you can make it, you want it uh, more similar, so a little bit more, you know, understated or you want more contrast, you can do, use the slider scale, you get generated, you get uh, font combinations and you get the uh, names of the Google fonts. If you're not sure about, if you're a copywriter, if you're not a copywriter and you have a lot of content, you want to simplify the content for your blog or your website, use Hemingway. Um, you also have AI tools which do the proofreading themselves. So you upload it over here and it does it automatically. Uh, this is some other stuff where I can start the session. Then you have more. If you need to create a mock-up, you have screen peek. You put your URL and it'll show you how your website or something will look within a phone or anything else. Vidyard is a fantastic tool if you want to, um, you know, create e-learning content. So I've, we've actually used this in Outline. So it'll use your webcam and it'll use, it'll show you a small version of yourself. So you can talk through a presentation or something like that. Rocketium uh, is a great tool for creating a video content. So I love PDF. You can do a whole bunch of these things. You know, then you don't have you, one uh, one senior gentleman. He said, you know, there are today there are many, and I know that uh, Harshit here works at Adobe, but there are many other tools out there which are outside the wall garden that is, you know, the Adobe universe. Draft send is you can add a PDF and uh, add voice to it. Uh, Buffer is fantastic if you have a bunch of different social platforms and you can add, uh, link all of them and centrally manage them. Yesterday I talked about Zoho Social being a better option just because they have great uh, features and is cheaper. You want to create a, a, a logo in five minutes. We actually did this yesterday for, uh, for this lady. Uh, and you enter your name, it'll ask you if you give you options of what kind of logos you like. So, you know, mimicking the human sort of thing, automation, mimicking this human sort of experience. Uh, it'll ask you colors, it'll ask you what you like, icons, and then within about five minutes, you have that front and Webflow. So front actually came out uh, a while back, but very similar to Webflow. Uh, Beautiful.ai is fantastic. You know, you everyone's had this experience. You create a presentation, you've added three images or four images, and then suddenly you realize, oh, I need to remove, or I need to add five more. This self, uh, you know, automates itself or self designs the layout. If you want to know what's happening with your competitors, you can use this. It monitors your competitors. If you want to moderate, um, you know, you want to see what's happening on social media and moderate uh, negative comments, you can do that online. Uh, you want to run an automated PR campaign, you can do this with Howler.ai. I realize it is something that is great for e-commerce sites again. It measures like emotional intelligence through the webcam and through heat maps. It'll tell you where sort of traction is happening. Edit experiments with Google is, you know, is a fantastic site to just check out what you can do here. You, your keyboard becomes uh, like a piano and you type, uh, let's say you create a simple melody or you just play around with it. The AI will respond uh, to the, you know, what sounds like a, a parallel to that. And then even you have an AI VC, you know, uh, start your pitch from there. So this is just a bunch of 
different tools that uh, we went through. Some of these we actually didn't go through yesterday, but uh, yeah. So that gives a little bit of context of what we covered. Right. So what I've uh, noticed with tools is two things. One is just putting the knowledge or information rather, any information up there, the color palettes, font match, all this I would say is not really coming from very deep understanding of design, but rather some basics, right? And that gets put out there and it's easy. It, it, there's no intelligence per se, but some, so some simple heuristics are there to match these up. Uh, but there are deeper things like uh, your beautiful AI, which uh, designs the presentation. You know, it has to understand quite a few things before the presentation design is up and running. And of course, a lot of other moderation tools which we can ignore. But let's look at the practice of design, designing things, graphic, web, design for web, and how these tools are actually chopping away pieces of the work that a designer was supposed to do. Um, it's open now, please. Uh, I, uh, I'd i like to take a, I mean, I, should, I, I mean, probably Sandeep is the, probably the best person to, you know, this is to clear my um, doubt here in the sector in general, you know, so what's happening here, it's like, tools like Webflow, right? Sandeep might be aware of it, right? Tools like Webflow where, uh, and Toont is he showed, and there are, the Editor X for Wix now and stuff like that, right? Uh, so these tools are really drag and drop editors and they practically, you can do each and every single thing with respect to content management system also, right? To the extent of databases being involved, right? So, um, so, so how does uh, this, so, I mean, I, be, I do see as a threat going forward for web designers, for example, just for example, uh, just take up example. So these tools are, so every founder kind of, it's a drag and drop DIY tool. Every founder thinks they can do that. And of course, uh, or if not, they can hire somebody and get it done. As simple as that, as it may not be a full-fledged designer who costs a bomb sometimes, or maybe costs higher, but it can be a simple guy and he can be just, has a very, very little learning curve. They end up becoming an expert within a month's time and they get it done. So uh, tools like this, I mean, for example, beautiful.ai, for example, that reason, I mean, just, just another example here. So, I mean, as a designer, you may not like the layouts they present automatically with respect to various content being placed there, but for a founder, for a business in the end of the day, it is something which is doing the job. Practically speaking, it is doing the job. It, unless it's a very big business and they are looking forward to have an agency on board and trying to catch up with their brand content in a very, very specific way. So most of the market probably I end up seeing is a, is a mid-size market, if at all. I mean, the startups and mid-size also here. They, for them, relevancy of design is reducing when these tools are coming a lot. Yeah. So here is something which is, which is you know, little, uh, that's where the future of design is what is, is the question. Yeah, so I, you know, um, it's a legitimate concern. I know, I, I think, um, and it's happened in other industries also. I was thinking about um, photography, for example. Um, you know, when digital cam cameras came on board, you had all these old school film, uh, you know, uh, guys uh, who were wondering, okay, hey, who are all these new folks uh, coming in and, you know, uh, doing photography it's it's supposed to be like a an art where you you know you click pictures and then you have to go through the whole grind of exposing them you know and there's this whole joy of doing it all of that is is true but what did the digital photography do? It, it automated that entire process right you take photos and now it's gone to the to the next level i'm thinking um for any parent who has a three-year-old like like an open and like i do um, you want to take photos, right? And the best advice I can give anybody is, is take, you spend money on buying a, a phone which has a great camera and I use a Pixel 2 with, and, and all of that is synced up on Google Photos and I just have to take photos throughout the day and, and it does all the rest, cataloging, tagging, uh, organizing memories, right? And all of that is automation. Um, so, so I think there is definitely room for, for automation to come, up, come in and solve a lot of the problems, which I think can, in fact, help designers, right? And then you move up the value chain instead of spending time on doing stuff that uh, can be automated. And then you focus on, you know, where really you can add your expertise. Now, coming to Webflow, um, I think that that's, that's a market that was uh, waiting to be disrupted. In fact, a couple of years ago, there was something called grid.io or something with grid. <clears throat> it turned out to be vaporware, I think. Um, didn't really materialize. But, you know, Webflow is, 
is is you know almost there in terms of cracking it um it's it's you know and where does let's say um someone like uh, me who runs an agency with a lot of our sort of investment in wordpress i think the advantage with uh, a platform like wordpress is that it's open source right i so if i tell you so i i had a discussion with one of my clients couple of days i sent two of them in past two days rather so so i mean just this is just little space website specific thing it's not may not be i mean we can have a broader discussion but this is something which since we bought this point so uh, from a business perspective from a business man's perspective from a business side of things and there is something is looking to achieve and that is being met how does the technology being open source or not or if somebody is really propagator of that only that is like one in 10 maybe right yeah, so yeah. that is the case where it will going to be diff- make a difference right yeah. otherwise otherwise he is good to go on his own that is something uh, very uh, i mean so this is very similar for all the not just web design i'm talking here there's a lot of other tools right logo making for example i mean uh, so we see logo making is becoming simpler simpler there's no more complex logos existing anymore right people end up there are logo maker you put your uh, name and your uh, like karan showed us that day put your name and your uh, tagline there and you get 100 options shown you pick any one out of that and whichever is close you can maybe tweak it a little bit and you're done right so where is that original logo thinking gone for designers i mean it is no more earlier it was a sketching activity then there was a the iterations and now what like it's functional two days the logo is out right and any anybody getting to start it and move ahead in line the value chain is they quick they want it quick they want it very quick i want a website go running in i mean who has that two three months of website development cycle now i mean nobody has it right yeah. you want it i mean in a web flow like a, a platform you can get it up in two days right uh, and up and running and functional fully yeah so this is yeah. a very very difficult discussion which i am having with my uh, few clients is especially i mean in india and out of india also it is it is something it's very difficult for them to convince or probably hard for for them to convince about you know getting a design they like what design then i mean so earlier you used to make mock ups and you know i mean like adobe xd and other used to they yeah. make very very high end mock ups very stylish you know i mean whatever whatever now they want a functional website in the end of the day who who has the time for one month of mock ups and then one month of development right who has the time for that right they are like yeah. two months and my business will go up down the drain so that's yeah. a little bit of a uh, yeah this thing came up yeah that's happening for apps too and uh, you know uh, apps are obviously a lot more expensive to uh, design and build and but that's going to happen it's already happening with this whole no code movement that uh, anup uh, i think briefly bubble bubble, bubble, yeah. bubble. bubble, bubble and and you can uh, in fact bubble has tutorials which tells you use bubble and make pinterest use bubble and make facebook use bubble and make, i mean name the app they have a tutorial how to make it using bubble platform right and um, um i'm 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 blanking out on the name of the couple of other apps i you know no adalo there's one called adalo adalo right adalo right adalo is for the for the app making side of things and similar to bubble i would say but on the app making side of things but yeah i mean to, so uh maybe uh, jessu and harshit uh, would like to have your opening remarks on this too and then we can go to the next yeah so from my point of view um see uh, personally speaking uh, I, i really there are these digital marketing companies who have uh, 100 200 people uh, uh, right employed with them uh, they manage social media content for people uh, it's largely the posts and things like that uh, but my uh, preference is uh, is to keep the team small but deliver great work uh, you know in some way or the other uh, we can uh, so that's another debate altogether but but uh, you know uh, just like how uh, when was saying uh, uh, if there are ways uh, to avoid having a whole team of people sitting uh, rather focus on more important things uh, think of how uh, you know I, I, that would certainly be the uh, uh, thing i would focus towards i would draw uh, gravitate towards is what i was thinking um but but there is a uh, there there's some kind of a difficulty in accepting it at the moment uh, i guess it's the same uh, difficulty in uh, that the, uh, the 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 photographers felt when digital camera fell so I, I, in some way i i think you'll have to just brush it aside in, uh, and then uh, you know just accept new in uh, i i don't know if uh, if we have a choice also like uh, win is actually facing with clients at the moment uh, so uh, so that those are my thoughts at the moment uh, anup uh, right so i would say here i mean uh, so uh, 
so so is it like that we are, we have to so see so design is something which we do and strategy also which we is we can digital strategy also we do sometimes right along with yeah it. yeah yeah absolutely so, it, so so basically what these things are making to do us to is have the shift going more towards the strategy side of things because that is something which tools don't do correct right? so is it that's where the future of you know is it is it moving away from really having really spending you know a tiny time on making a logo or making anything like that or any maybe half you of that the time also that we spend on making one post you know moving that a little to the left little to the right yes that is perhaps the bulk of the time that we uh, we go and it's it's such a useless time in sometimes uh, right. but everybody spends so much time on that one thing move the hand up move the hand down uh, like that from, uh, a, from, a, uh, from a business owner business owner perspective that's all waste right i mean they end up saying here get me three posts out that's it yeah. i mean so even if they are not pixel perfect it's okay but it it is it should just do the job at the end of the day right and it should it should be functional readable well well put out it, it may not be a piece of art at the end of the day but it should be well good to look at right it should yeah, not the be the basics are covered in some way right like what a digital camera does i think that's a fantastic uh, metaphor sandeep right you may not get the exact color tone and you can show one photograph to the other and say see this is what the film does and this is what digital but uh, yeah yeah and, and this is something that i'm experiencing for that i mean that matter even iphone cameras are now yeah, far, far, far better than many of the digital cameras in many uh, yeah. so this is something that i'm experiencing sorry i'll take another minute uh, uh, from a general mainline advertising uh, folk towards clients who are new the mainline guys want to spend a lot of time understand the pro- the problem you know distill it take out uh, the gist of it capture it in a statement but the client today is saying why can't you just say it? this is the best product for break as a breakfast alternative versus you know you say a line that means the same thing but it has layers of thinking to it uh, right uh, so i i see uh, a movement towards functional uh, so i think that is that is given uh, just get it going with just say it, don't try to uh, romanticize it don't try to overthink it so that that movement i, I certainly see Ashit, do you want to? Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I mean, definitely interesting discussion, and uh, I would say I echo most of what uh, Sandeep and Jessu have been saying in the fact that uh, there is no point in sort of uh, like holding back in any way because this is this sort of automation is going to happen, and it's happened across centuries. Like even in in the case of art, like. earlier people used to an artist job was probably mimicking reality as best as possible right so you had photo realistic uh, someone would sit down and sort of paint a portrait or whatever and then you had cameras that came along and they could do that so that was <laughs> in uh, in more abstract like your picassos and so on so you you were free to interpret reality in whatever way you wanted to rather than just mimic it right and then sort of uh, so in that sense i think one key insight is also to think of given that these tools exist what is something new that a designer a human designer can bring to the table just as in the case of art like if photography could capture reality uh, in its like basic form then what did artists do in terms of interpreting reality in different ways so can a parallel be drawn uh, to that in today's times uh and uh, yeah like we were discussing so there's no point in sort of thinking of of these things not happening or becoming a reality much sooner than later and one of the other interesting things could also be like uh, sort of this uh, statement that i i have not used any automation tools in the work that i've done could itself become a statement that you make as a designer so you could eventually have these two sort of uh, different and maybe you end up charging much more for that kind of work or something uh so uh yeah I just sort of zoomed out uh, thoughts uh, on those lines yeah so uh just adding to what harshit said you know handmade has become a very big thing everything is machine made today but handmade the niche of handmade especially leather goods you know with So that custom stitching and all that has become a very big deal in in Midwest US at least. Uh, might come to other countries too. Uh, plus, there is 
a chap he he publishes these 30 minute videos on youtube it's nothing but him hand making uh, a visiting card template and then uh, printing it on this old machine you know which is that i don't know what that machine is called it's not uh, uh, offset printing or digital printing it's got the screen, setup screen printing screen uh, printing i don't know if it is even screen printing it's you have to set up 30 different things even to get one print you know and he does it yeah, with yeah. gold and silver three and different whatnot. screens and all that yeah uh, it's beautiful to watch and and the output is also really cool but yes there is going to be a new market for such niche uh, products and services always but then i want like the art is still remain right uh, uh, while photography is there the art is but that's a niche like you mentioned yeah gramophone has become a big deal lps are lps are back in production by the way my father has a big collection of lps now and uh, there are these small shops which are selling original lps of all music available and and even high end music you know where where people are drawing copper wires and all that they try they prefer listening to music on lps now rather than on uh, you know digital medium i i have a, a quick thing i have a friend um, who ha- who set up uh, instead of using your new age digital amp he's gone and procured a, an amp which runs on transistors oh <laughs> it and it basically takes uh, enough electricity of like two or three rooms put together <laughs> but he says the sound is is something else but yeah so there are going to be such connoisseurs who will want something custom made and all that right that is one part of it but see as a dis- okay <clears throat> let me let me start with something controversial now right design in isolation is nothing design has to be for a particular thing whatever that end output is you know it could be a logo it could be a website it could be a product it could be uh, i don't know a wedding hall everything is designed right design is something which is made deliberately to look aesthetically pleasing and functional correct right? otherwise it is art i guess right that's yeah if it is not functional you can say it is it is more towards artistic side of things yeah. it's purely functional it's more towards the engineering side of things but yeah. a mix of aesthetic and and uh, function would would be something useful and usable so what is design being used for matters now if the lower end of design and i'm calling it lower end deliberately because it's being democratized you know by automation tools again tools are of different kinds but we'll come to that a little later uh productivity tools which designers can use photoshop was a productivity tool right but those tools have become smarter and smarter and smarter and now anybody can use them so the lower end of design where you know a logo has to be made so some ai can come in and make something for you quick things are going to go that way today morning i was looking at uh, one of the email groups i am on and there are eight different people asking for logo design and my budget is 1000 rupees right there are a lot of people pitching for that too that's fine that's the lower end of the market nobody wants to work in the lower end of the market these tools kind of take away that market which is good in one sense second coming to websites let's say web okay again again let me say talk about design a little bit maybe 30 seconds one is designing these independent graphic pieces a, a, a post a logo a banner etc which is pretty much one time use or you know it's done once and keep using it but when you are trying to design something like a website now the website can also have multiple functions right i mean it could be a simple one page website it could be a 20 page website a 100 page website but it is static people come visit there and go away you could have something more uh, interactive like a news or uh, let's say bar and bench which is a legal review site e- every day every hour something is to happen there right? you could have a web application where calculations and other 20000 things are happening uh, facebook is a web application right? now a mobile app too but so so the website is a very very broad or all comprehensive term end output what should the website do kind of determines what has to go into it one of the most popular uh, let's say the hot segment in india today is fintech fintech right a lot of designers are after that fintech industry because a lot of new things are cropping up there and they want usability user friendliness and all that so a lot of designers are working in that industry today but they are they are again building apps and websites what are these websites and apps doing they are enabling loans and borrowing and credit and all that good stuff just simplifying life for the customer right ultimately it's simplification 
design can also be used for multiple complex things like workflow design like uh, yesterday i was talking about visual uh, visualize uh, value it's a beautiful uh, company their youtube videos are really nice you should all visit that visualize value just google for it you will get it and what they are doing is they are trying to they are helping services businesses simplify the communication to tell the customer what they do if i tell you i do x to explain what i do is very difficult because the customer at the end of the day is saying okay i want a logo i want a logo i don't care if you stand on your head and do it or not yeah? but to add to showcase the value that you add through the process through the process that you use is very tricky so visualize value are designers who are helping services companies uh, you know communicate this value to the customer interesting concept they are also designers and, and 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 what they are trying to do here and the value they add is very simple they they take your complex process and thought and make it into simple visual graphics right so the end output for the customer for the for the service business owner is huge because ultimately his communication is simplified and he doesn't have to spend you know 20 hours explaining what he does right the benefit is very clear so coming back to design being automated there is value beyond autom automation is what i feel you know looking at the process of design itself looking at the end output of design itself i believe there are thousands of niches which have not been explored so far for example when i can understand where you come from but then i can ask you this question who is your customer and what is the benefit they get from you it's not to put you on a spot but no no see i'll i'll tell you i'll i i think i get it i i totally get it so you know so so let me clear the context here a little bit or uh, you know more in in terms of you know uh, so what you're saying uh, anup is essentially i think it's it's an unwritten role of a designer today designer is see no more we don't have designer agency especially today who are only going to really make one logo without a thought behind it or maybe just or maybe just keep that narrow thinking around getting a logo right in a certain way there is a lot of background research and understanding of industry which goes behind making any design for that reason you take a take a branding example for that reason it 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 can it it can span across months for a reason because there is a lot going behind and for which it's 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 going also beyond understanding of the industry sometimes with respect to the goal we are trying to achieve so essentially i mean this is my way of working not every agency might work in that way but i end up i first start asking with i start asking goals first and then only i say correct and that you don't even need to do this particular thing because you don't need your goals doesn't support it so that's that's something so so that's where i was the point i was making is that that's where we getting into strategy of things right isn't it is is it is it a bit bent towards strategy so design is no more uh, something which people really hire agencies or people for it is the strategy of that design for which they hire for and then execution execution is ultimately end up becoming only that design part then once everything is set up all now you have decided clearly what we want how we want where how it should be placed now you can come up and make one and that too if you want a logo and it can be done in say two days better do that right i mean of course there there are niche as you said there are niches that people will be very very particular about what they want sometimes but the niche is very small right as compared to i mean uh, not to mention like not to say that like we were looking for like lots of clients but there are certain few but but niche is uh, uh like it, it is very small a segment i believe right like like art artists today artists are very less today right i mean so you can also define your niche in different ways right for example okay i'll give you an example of my agency we are currently focused on working with solar energy companies that's the niche we have caught on to and we may be working with those companies only for another one and a half to two years and we may change i mean 3 years ago i was working with uh, education institutes a lot now then i stopped you know for various reasons but but you can you can define your niche by industry or by the output too i mean i can define my niche as uh, again that is something which is happening organically at my agency is b2b service saas products saas softwares that sell to other businesses are approaching us saying that help us out we have not approached them right i have to now sit and design an entire process to take a b2b saas company and you know generate these leads and sales for them i don't have too much insight into it but what i am doing is i am creating a productized service right for those guys they come and subscribe to the service every month they will pay and they will start getting leads and sales now how the process works the 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 
the internal working of the process also has to be explained to the customer that this is what we are going to do and this is the reason you are going to get value out of it the benefit ultimate benefit a customer seeks from an agency is in their head usually they are not articulating that right but if the agency says this is the benefit i am going to give you and the customer says no this is not the benefit i am looking for but another person comes and says yes you are the right people right you may not be able to work with every single person that is true but you will start working with the right set of people then so the usp has to be understood and can you package it differently for example it's it's another thing productization of the service is another thing which is which is a big deal today because of this automation uh, thing that is coming up and yet was, another yeah oh, sorry go ahead, go ahead please uh, so, so i was i was trying to probably bring the light into a little deeper or a maybe a broader stage is general you know i mean general if you speak of this so i mean so yeah you're right in saying about creating a niche and you know uh, trying to figure out what you do best and then sell that out but uh, um so that so, so that transition is, is suddenly being put on the head of say design agencies and designers today and we see it happening till later or not now uh, in general the whole shift i mean designers may not be strategists so what i'm trying to say here i'm talking about design, real design so I, it may not apply to me i may be a strategist i can do that but in general the design industry there are people who are designers who are only designers what do, then, these, what do these design, designers do I mean, when you so, say so they, they, design, they make beautiful designs, they make beautiful designs for anything. It can so, be a wedding, it can be a wedding decor, for that reason. It can be a, a website, it can be a app. It's, it, they make experiences of apps and and designs. They are not strategists; they're designers. They're they're the only designers. That I mean, they are. They they make they do beautiful work. They know their work. They know their jobs very well. They do that very well. So artists, they're generally a part of an agency working for someone. Right. So you know, so I feel um, the automation um, tr- gives you two opportunities, uh, right? One is to build uh, a tool uh, which caters to the design spectrum, which is easy to commoditize, and then you uh, free up your time. And as a human, you are then providing you know the value that only a human being can, which a uh no ai can do today um or in the near future and so therefore you move up the value chain so you're creating you know opportunities there and that's where the niche comes in right uh so maybe karn is 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 the best person because he's got both ends of the spectrum covered he's building a tool for automation uh and he's also he also runs a agency so so maybe he can speak on on on, on that and also just a quick thing about niche um uh, you know i i don't remember which book this was but uh, i found this uh, interesting he said uh, be a big fish in a small pond you know and then uh, jump into uh, the next adjacent pond so find a niche be the big big fish there and then get into the uh, adjacent pond and then grow your uh, business that way so that's just one way to look at it yeah uh, so need to you know what you were pointing out is I, i was actually thinking that i was listening to this conversation cuz uh, i get where you're coming from in in saying i know that you know there's an opportunity with the niche and i get where you're coming from in in saying that you know uh, is there a, i mean do designers then have to morph into becoming more strategists or thinking more strategically and providing more input uh, or is there going to continue to be an opportunity for them to do pure uh, visual sort of value add right uh, like for us um when i started uh, our journey with exploring this uh, design automation or the idea of like 5 years ago 5 6 years ago i was uh, at a conference in goa uh, it's called curious design yatra and i increasingly was finding that you know customers that we were engaging with and i'm sure you all of you know individually had these experiences customers would end up giving very nuanced feedback right of saying like acha uh nahi you know change this i think if you approach it from this different angle whether it's idea driven feedback or it's like visual feedback you know and and now because they're so uh, experienced in using apps and websites they say no i think i want my experience to be like this so i want my interaction to be like this so i said acha you're giving me so much feedback what would it take for you to do it yourself and that's when we started our journey you know and and sort of creating the product and with the product we've gone through this is like a fourth 
iteration and pivot. And I think now we're getting to a point where, you know, potentially it could um, get some sort of long-term traction. But at the same time, uh, when I was, I realized that if there's going to be this proliferation of design automation tools or just automation tools in general, uh, the, the best thing to do is just to sort of try and move up the value chain, right? So about five, six years ago, I started focusing more on uh, research-driven work, more on uh, strategy-driven work. Uh, and, you know, like you were saying, when, you know, the, the projects that we also take, and I know that Pixelmatic also does, uh, does this, the research and uh, strategic communication exercises, they run for a couple of months, you know, before you end, eventually have an output. So the research part might take about six weeks and then that goes into visual asset creation and you end up creating these whole bunch of assets. And then you go into some of what Anup was talking about, you know, how is it that you then take that to market or create that eventually leading to sort of sales leads. And in the various conversations that I've had both with educators as well as, you know, going to a lot of these online design conferences and now exploring this automation thing. One thing is for sure, the designers of the future, uh, the ones who are in college right now, they definitely need to know a whole lot more about business, about management, about strategy. Uh, they need, that needs to happen. You no longer, you know, I, I don't think, like in agencies, advertising agencies, like Jason was mentioning earlier, for the longest time, you would you would assume that the best creative talent are the Malu boys, you know, and the Malu boys and girls because they come from Kerala, they have this great visual aesthetic, and that's the case with a lot of agencies even now. Uh, but in in fine art school, you're really not taught how to sell yourself, you know, uh, the commercial part of it, how to market yourself. Even colleges like Srishti, uh, now you have design management is available in some of these colleges over here, but it's not uh, mass yet and it really needs to be. And then that brings me to, you know, the specific question that I wanted to ask. In Europe is a little different, right? Sorry to interrupt, Karan. Uh, I think the designers who come out of it already have some flair towards... Very uh, much. Yeah. Very, very, I completely uh, agree. Design management, like, like in, in various schools in, uh, in Milan, you know, in Italy, fashion, fashion management has become, has become a big thing over the last 10 years. Design management also in the last five, seven years has become big in schools overseas, but not as much over here, you know? So, so my, the question that I actually wanted to ask you and the, the thing that you see is data becoming an inherent uh, part. So earlier you would end up having qualitative data that you have these in-person conversations and then you have quantitative data. We have, again have like, you know, market gathering kind of thing, but in our experiences, which uh, like using Netflix or using Spotify, right? If I just use Spotify a different way for 10 days, my experience using Spotify, the kind of music that it shows up will be completely different. Yeah. So, so, and with Netflix or whatever else. So what are your thoughts on how suddenly access, not just access to data, but crunching of data in really short time timelines and having real time feedback across a wide variety of uh, sectors become something that is publicly available. Now, earlier, only a, f a small niche of people say would go to use Google Trends or other tools like this. But now you're finding that more and more people are, you know, it's, it's becoming something that just needs to be there by default. And therefore, then you think of ethics and the responsibility of this or and the openness of it. Like in the conversation that I was having this morning, Katya was even saying, I think it's important people who are going to be creating automation tools or using machine learning and, you know, maybe Hashit, you can uh, talk to this. It will become important for people to be transparent about the methodology that they've used in creating the data set, you know, so that they, they're, they're saying that there isn't any bias over here. And this is how we've ensured that there isn't bias so that your, your experience doesn't end up being biased in that sense. So what are your thoughts on, you know, how data will become a part of this sort of creative process and, Hashid, if you can talk about, you know, like this bias kind of thing and being transparent about data sets, maybe. Yeah, uh, so definitely, I think uh, this is uh, a very important discussion, especially because uh, I think it, it ends up being a designer's role in the larger industry to ensure these kinds of ethical practices or more than that, just that these kinds of things are thought through deeply because the engineers and the sort of uh, 
machine learning researchers are uh, like their job is probably to just crank up the accuracy percentages and so on and they're probably not uh, uh, not really thinking through holistically what this means in terms of uh, how it's going to impact society and so on so it then becomes almost the job of the designers to sort of come in and make sure that uh, uh, that those uh, end of the spectrum of things are also being thought of so definitely i mean uh, the necessity for ensuring uh, bias free uh, sort of data set collection so that it doesn't get into that repetitive cycle where uh, you collecting a biased data set and then sort of reinforcing that through uh, through the machine learning that bias and then that just would perpetuate uh, throughout the cycle uh, so it becomes definitely very critical to bring in a, what a lot of people call the human in the loop uh, machine learning approach where uh, either uh, the human is uh, validating data sets or the human is uh, sort of manually involved in vetting data sets or whatever like there could be different ways in which the human gets involved but uh, definitely uh, a lot of companies people are uh, sort of uh, uh vouching for that to happen instead of an end to end automation system that just runs on its own um and uh, the other i think in terms of like strategy as a term is being spoken about quite a bit in our discussions i think uh, one of the key things is that that strategy today is also driven by data like uh, like the, the core of forming new strategies uh relies a lot on how uh, we are able to use machine learning technologies to capture large amounts of data and then process those large amounts of data to get insights customer insights market insights and so on so i think uh, in in that sense uh, it again becomes very important for designers to be aware of how that process works maybe not technically in terms of how the actual algorithms function and so on but just at a at a level where they can have meaningful conversations where they know okay uh, to generate strategies how can i use or what kind of data points do i need to capture uh, if i've captured these data points is it possible to capture these data points uh, what are the combination of data points that can help me uh, evolve a particular strategy that i want to get to so i think those kinds of things is something that uh, designer need to sort of uh, uh like sort of pick up at at faster paces because there are things that are happening already there are things that uh, whatever we do will influence uh, a lot of the roadmap of companies uh, so to have a have a meaningful say in that conversation it becomes a, a imperative to sort of know how to how these things function Uh, yeah i i think there was one interesting thing um uh, that karan mentioned that uh, sort of struck a chord um uh, is the idea of selling design right design management so ha- to have that skill to be able to sell your design i think is is very important um and it's not just at the point of converting a lead into a customer uh, that the selling happens it has to happen throughout the design journey right when you interacting with the customer and you know you have to sell your sort of expertise and your ideas at every step and i think that's something not a lot of designers have uh and going forward if automation is going to take away all of the low end work then there's got to be a lot more emphasis on uh, that sort of skill as well to be able to uh sell your sort of expertise and your uh ideas uh, and also quickly on what her harshit was talking about i think and what anup also mentioned before design is no longer at least uh, i mean it's always been the case but i think even more so now that it can't be done in isolation right you have data sets uh, that you know that that influence uh, design decisions uh, influence uh, the user experience so so i think a designer needs to be a lot more aware um, of of for broader set of things uh including strategy than just being purely focused on uh, uh the design uh 
uh, side of things. Yeah, I would yeah. say I would add to that. Um, so what Kwan said again, what you just said, Sandeep, exactly is right. Uh, but uh, on the other side, uh, so getting business side of things, or to be the sellable kind of side of things, uh, this is a little off thing. But probably Upwork and such platforms, you know, in a way, are getting that problem solved again. So that's I mean, you can call it automation or not, whatever. But yeah, these are the these are supply demand uh, problems are being you know met by these tools also in a way. Right, that's one. On the other side, uh, this is a very genuine problem because uh, for the education, especially to ramp up the respect to selling, to be providing that ability to sell or probably to be looking at the business side of things is because, so I'll, I I mean, I'm working with a freelancer for a project and uh, I mean, I do end up working with freelancers at times. So, but yeah, so again, a very typically, typically amazing, amazing guy. I mean, very creative and awesome. Whatever he makes is amazing. But you know, the problem here is the business side of things. I am talking to the client, which is talking business. And he has his own set of timelines. And of course, everything was planned. It's not like that. But uh, but but there's a different fundamental way the whole thing is being approached between me and the client and between me and him. So what is happening here is I am in the middle and I am the one who's really facing brands from both sides. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you must have probably gone through this. And I've, I mean, of course, I've also gone enough through it. I'm telling you this one instance is going on right now, but it is really painful. I mean, I, as a creative person, lo ends up losing my creativity on this. I end up only management. I mean, my job is only to manage here and there, here and there, here and there. It, it is really uh, something which if he would have that sense of, so I cannot tell the client is wrong because he's right. Because I also am a business guy. I understand he's right. I cannot tell the designer that he's wrong because if I tell him wrong, he'll run away. And he, he has literally no grudge in running. He will say, I raise my hands up and I'm going. Where will I be then? So that is a situation where I uh, believe in that is an agency management problem. You know, I think we should have a discussion later about possibly that. Possibly then, yeah, maybe that's okay. But yeah, uh, I've, I've that, tracked it over the period of time, and you, even even you should have a chat with Sandeep. You know, whenever you have time, because he's also tracked it over a period of time. It's agency management problem. Uh, I just want to add two things. You know, so we could like we can have final round of discussion and maybe close this, and we can come back at some other date and. Uh, continue with the discussion. It's been interesting so far. Uh, thing number one, ultimately, whatever you do with design has to go to the market. Right? If you, for example, if Sandeep is a client, you're not designing for Sandeep, you're designing for Sandeep's clients. Right? And understanding Sandeep's clients' perspective is always going to be tricky because Sandeep is sitting in between. He's not allowing you access directly. So for example, you know, uh, this was a few years ago when I got into huge argument with a client saying that, you know, uh, uh, ad copy A versus ad copy B, which is going to run good, well, you know, because their perception is different, my perception is different. So we did an A-B test. That is where a lot of this data crunching tools and other things come into play. We ran an A-B test for three days and it was very clear that happened to be the case that my <laughs> copy won out by a huge margin. It could have been the other way, right? I mean, there are so... There are no gut feel arguments anymore. The market can, can decide these things really fast for you. And you don't have even have to expose the entire market to what you're doing. You take a very, very small subset of the market, maybe 2,000 people, and they see what you have done and they get to vote on what you have done. Right? What I'm saying is the end customer has a lot more decision-making power and you have the power to reach them faster today. That is one thing, number one, which is a workflow part of it. Even workflows are getting... I mean, designed, if you take a Wix, for example, they have workflows built in now. You, know, you can do a lot of workflow management through that. Part two, let us go to the grandfather of all these design things that we are doing today. Right? It is a controversial statement, but I believe architecture is where it all started. Originally, if you see, the need to look aesthetic pleasing and functional came from architecture of all kinds. I mean, be it temple architecture, be it uh, you know, home, palaces, uh, whether you take the Western style or the Eastern side or the Indian, uh, you know, architecture, civilizational thing. A lot of complex engineering and aesthetic problems were solved there. And, but the thing is, the customer was a single person. Either it was the king or the homeowner or the villa owner or the palace owner, right? It was, you were not catering to the masses. And the, the business of architecture has evolved from there and that has been how they have been doing. And architects have to always balance this, right? Aesthetics with functionality, and they have to sell their services. In India, especially, architects cannot advertise themselves. They're restricted by law. But still they flourish. A lot of them flourish. How do they do that? Maybe there is a, there's a lot of learning for the design community 
at large to borrow from architecture community. Because ultimately, a lot of architects also get into designing, interior designing and things like that. And they also dabble with, you know, painting, sketching, drawing and whatnot. So, so how do you, how do you balance out the business side with the, with the, with the, let's say the creative side is something we all have to learn from architects, I feel. You know, I'm looking at that industry. I'm, I have a, quite a few friends in the architecture community and I talk to them quite often about how they do this. A lot of interesting insights. Maybe all of us should catch hold of architects and talk to them how they balance uh, creativity and business. You know, it's, it's a very... Uh, a lot of it moving towards the functional, I guess. Not really. I mean, because... I mean, the niches are there, but if you look at... If you, if you do a square feet comparison, I guess the functional will perhaps be the largest number of square feet that is being... Yeah, so they have to balance it out, right? They cannot, yeah, yeah. Uh, because there are, uh, let's, let's just say, laws of physics kind of defeats their ambitious projects. So they have to stick within uh, what is available from the materials, from uh, physics, from yeah. engineering, and then work on top of that. So, so there are constraints. So one way to probably look at it is automation tools, uh, democratization of data, large scale data crunching, let us think of all these as constraints for us as designers. I would not, I should not say us, you know, sorry, but designers should see these as new constraints that have come up and work with them or think of them as new tools that have come up and work with them. Architects work with new materials all the time, right? And, and they use the material in what is existing, what, uh, and then it enhances their design because the new material is more flexible, has more durability, etc. So, so rather than thinking of roadblocks, I would say uh, the two ways to look at it, automation, data, data crunching, public access to everything are the, are the boundaries within which you work, one way to look at it, or are the tools with which you work. So for example, you use automation tools, you yourself use automation tools in your workflow, reduce the overall time you take to deliver things to the customers. But because you have the experience and expertise, what the output you bring is going to be much superior than what the customer could get, even with the automation tools. Or yet another way, right? I mean, uh, reduce the timeline, reduce the charges, start churning out things really fast. Your brain, your uh, aesthetic uh, outlook and your, uh, let's say, experience starts working along with these tools to get cater to a large number of clients. Basically, you are productizing what you do. Right? So, so there are so many ways to look at it. Right? I would say it's a good thing and it's it's not stoppable. That we all agree to, I think. You know, Harshit is also staying there. Karan is also staying. Karan is trying to cannibalize his own uh, business now, which is interesting. I think that's the way to go to it. Right? So, uh, so we cannot stop the march of technology. We cannot stop, uh, you know, we cannot legislate them out. It is going to come one way or the other, whether from India or abroad, we don't know. Ultimately, the customer wants what they want. They want it cheaper. They want it faster. They want it today. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so given, given that situation, it is in the best interest for us to leverage these tools with our expertise. With our expertise, I believe we can do this faster. There are boutique agencies which have come up which only do web flow based design. There are agencies yeah. which have come up which do only no code design. They say we do only use no code tools. We will not use any other set of tools. Okay. And, and they are helping startups prototype fast. So startup would have waited one month to prototype. Now after 48 hours, they are able to prototype and run things and see you know, in real time what is happening. Uh, there are companies whose only job, only job they do is create landing pages, for example. So they work with marketers. They create landing pages, quick, you know, five, six hour turnaround time, pay them a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. They're all set. You have a beautiful looking, very functional landing page that works for your purpose. You can duplicate it, replicate it, whatever you require and you run with it. So niches are being explored where you're narrowing down the output, not the sector, the output. So, so yeah, interesting, interesting times to be in, which is also a Chinese curse, strangely enough. Uh, yeah, you're right. So, I mean, I just have to, just one last thing to add to it is that, I mean, it can be very irrelevant, but uh, um, so is it like, so if you are going to reduce time being spent on the activity substantially, right? Then what is happening here is, of course, the price reduction is going to be happening huge. It's like, 
there'll be more number of things being created in the same time in which earlier there was one being created right i mean if i can cater to one client in three months now i can cater to five clients three clients in three months right so i'm trying to say that that's going to be reduced that's going to be uh, reducing the i mean the the, the the pricing or maybe the the, the commercial model will be going to be very small bite sized well, I, i think uh, when if i can okay. look at it differently yeah. i'd say let's say if see your per hour cost is uh let's assume it's 5000 bucks right earlier and this is I mean, because we also work with a lot of freelancers a lot of the time the freelancer will come and say acha i want to get paid 80000 bucks for this particular project and it's like in my math it doesn't make sense i a, i don't agree with that costing and b you know it doesn't work out for my customer so i said tk the maximum amount of value that you're adding is in the first 40 50% right the rest of it you're doing a lot of repetitive sort of stuff so and this maximum amount of value you're going to be do- doing in the first let's say week or 10 days the rest of it is going to take you rest- another month to do so you're charging me let's assume 1 lakh for a month what if i pay you 40k for 10 days work and you can do three projects so yes th- it does create stresses where the designer or you you know what uh, some people also saying earlier they end up having to sell themselves more or having to do a lot more video have create more value they have to put themselves so it's just the nature of the beast right now that's just where we are but i think if you just sort of pivot it your per hour cost doesn't have to go down but you do have to reach out to more people therefore yeah. therefore being in niches help because then you know how to sell repeatedly if you sell to schools and once you sell to 10 schools 11 school is easy to sell to right so so that is what i mean that is where i was repeatedly saying about niches just so would love to have your uh, thoughts on the discussion so far and uh, yeah so um, i was finding it a little difficult to uh, use this uh, discussion in a practical and way at my work you know immediately uh, but the key takeaway clearly is to uh, is to not be uh, blind to this development uh, and, and you know uh, and put a lot more time and effort in understanding this a little bit more uh i think we all prefer to be safe uh, and go in the way that we are all used to rather than uh, break out of that so so that's a good take away from for me from this year perfect in fact um, okay so harshit last i'll give you the last words on this before we close this discussion go ahead please um yeah i mean i think uh, i guess i could quickly uh, sort of mention an analogy that uh, a google uh, researcher who works with deep uh, what's that company called deep mind uh, sort of once mentioned that uh, so we were just having a discussion and he was like uh, at some point uh, when cars came along people used to ride horses before that and so someone would sort of argue that i enjoy riding horses and i wouldn't ride a car so but the idea was that the car takes you from point a to point b if you want to use it use it but people who enjoy horse riding now build sort of horse riding spaces at their backyards or something so like only people who definitely want to continue that will continue that but if there's something that's going to offer a functionality that uh, just works for other people uh, without them having to uh, like if they're not super passionate about something they'll they'll use that so uh, i thought that that was an interesting analogy this was a few years ago so it's obviously like people have already started adopting uh, tools and all but i think uh, like uh, we, most of us i guess are in the same uh, uh, like mind space that these things are going to happen and going to happen faster than we expect so the idea is to just sort of stay afloat uh, and be aware of what's happening great so closing points henry ford said if i had asked people what they want they would have said faster horses yeah, absolutely yeah and california gold rush the maximum amount of money was made by the people who were renting out tools not the gold diggers yeah all right with that i will end this uh, panel discussion we will all uh, maybe reconvene at some point of time with uh, with uh, some deeper topics to discuss